Since making my college magazine front cover and content page for the preliminary task, I've learnt a lot in terms of both skills and also knowledge. For example, my knowledge of the codes and conventions of a magazine has vastly improved, and this has been echoed by my use of fonts and the size of them, my, and also my use of a simple but effective colour scheme, and also my choice of images. If you look at my preliminary task, I have used very basic and almost default fonts, which are coupled with a bad colour scheme, which is hard to view in some cases. The cover also looks very empty as my space utilisation wasn't very good, and this has been massively improved for my final product as I do not feel there is any unused space. Although my final product's front cover is quite full up, it still manages to look professional and this is a key part of creating a good cover. I feel that I have also followed the key codes and conventions of a magazine correctly this time, compared to my preliminary task where it all seems quite random and messy. I feel that my use of fonts on my final piece's cover has been one of the big leaps from preliminary to final. I think that my fonts used on my front cover will become one of the main things that my magazine is recognisable for. Whilst making the preliminary task, my skills on Photoshop and Quark Express were very limited, and this is shown in both the cover and contents page. This led to my preliminary cover being very simple, and the masthead covering the cover star's face instead of the cover star's head, slightly lapping over the masthead, a technique which I went on to use in my final product. On my preliminary cover, my masthead simply wasn't good enough in terms of size, positioning and also colour. My font choice was also bad, and it, as it didn't look like a professional magazine masthead in the end, so I had to massively improve this for the final product. I have also learnt many skills on Photoshop, such as making adjustments to images, and then applying these to select areas, and also the techniques, um, the technique required to place my cover star's head in front of the masthead which was discussed earlier. My knowledge of what needs to be on a magazine cover is also vastly improved and this is shown in the positioning of all the text on my final cover such as the placement and size of issue date and price. In terms of my contents page there have been many major improvements in the terms of the transition between preliminary and final. The main and most noticeable change and improvements has got to be in the layout. On my preliminary piece the layout was almost random and rushed and this has got to be attributed to my list of knowledge of the codes and conventions of the magazine uh, contents page, which I have now fully learnt. For my final piece, I have chosen upon a single column layout with a collection of images to the side of it. This makes the contents page more aesthetically pleasing, and it also makes it a lot more practical, as it allows the magazine reader to easily find what they are looking for. This style is often used in many popular ma music magazines, such as Enemy and Q, and this is why I have chosen to use it. Also, my font sizes on my preliminary contents page were way too big and this could be attributed to lack of experience with the software and also due to being, uh, there being too much white space. On my final piece, the fonts were a lot smaller and this correctly follows the coding conventions of a real professional piece. So all in all, there have been many changes and improvements and it could be said that I have learnt from my mistakes. I now also know to lay out text using subheadings and to also position my images more suitably.